Thank you for welcoming me into your uh, community. Uh, I came up with a joke. I tweeted it, and like nobody responded. So instead of taking notice of the complete lack of response to my tweet, I'm going to tell it again and then punch myself in the nuts. How many... <laughs> oh, God. How many Ruby software engineers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm pleased I did that then. So, uh, I do a thing called Welcome to the Music Business, You're Fucked. Um, uh, I don't know if you saw my little movie up at the top there. I've been in a bunch of bands, Public Image Limited, Killing Joke Ministry, Nine Inch Nails, Pig Face. I have a label. I've been to China. I made a documentary. I've just completed a successful Kickstarter for my third book, which is called Band Smart. You didn't start the clock. You see, I could have been such a dick. It seems like it seems like two hours, but I've still got thirty minutes on the clock. Um, uh, so yeah, so I was here four or five weeks ago. Um, I don't know if those of you, who was here four or five weeks ago. So you might have noticed I've lost six or seven pounds. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's uh, penile reduction surgery, and <laughs> that's been terrific. It really has. <laughs> but anyway, I thought, what can I do? What can I reach out? What can I talk about that will unite everybody, right? I came up with this. The top five tips <laughs> what to do when one of your songs is used in the opening ceremony of the Olympics, <laughs> as, as one of mine was uh, four weeks ago. I mean, who of us here, hands up, I mean, who hasn't had a song <laughs> used? <laughs> okay, then. All right. Well, I just had a few, here's a few tips anyway. Don't start a conversation with that. Hey, in the Olympics. Right. I'm sure my mom does, but I shouldn't. If it happens to you, don't start a conversation with it. Don't keep mentioning it. <laughs> ah, ba -da -ba. Oh, here he is. Here comes Mr. Fucking Olympics. Hey. <laughs> Share the credit. Spread the credit around. Who's the guy who put all that music together? I've forgotten his name, but thanks to him. Um, <laughs> be thankful. Absolutely be thankful. And stay humble. Just stay humble. Let's just go over those again. Share the credit. Be thankful. <laughs> Don't start a conversation. <laughs> Don't keep mentioning it. Stay humble. Is there a problem with the lights? Is there a problem with the lights, Mr. Lightman? Oh, my light isn't working. Oh. Oh, this would have been superb, wouldn't it? <laughs> so there you go. Hopefully you can put that to use. <laughs> I also, I just wanted to see what that looked like, that big. <laughs> It's awesome, isn't it? If I said, will someone take a picture and post it on Twitter? Like, this guy's a fucking dick. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it for real. Enough joking aside. Are there any rock stars here today? I don't mean rock star rock stars. I mean programming Ruby UX. So you've got the fucking lingo down. <laughs> Sass. <laughs> Uh, Atari, <laughs> Commodore 64. <laughs> Are there any rock stars here today? Yeah. <laughs> That's great because Jimmy John's Sandwich Shop. <laughs> I'm looking for some rock stars. 
And I, I do that for two reasons. One, I am a dick, as we've established. And two, things are just changing all the time. Everything's participatory. Everybody's a rock star. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's a producer. Everybody's a DJ. Everybody's a rock star. And I'm a dick. Oh. So let's have a look at formats. Uh, we looked at this last time. I like this. Um, formats keep changing. You know, um, I think I've been lucky uh, in my music business and entrepreneurial experience to have things just constantly change around me all the time. When I came up, when I started my label, we'd make vinyl and cassette, not all the time. Um, and that made things difficult because we'd have a successful band, but maybe we didn't sell any cassettes or we, we didn't sell any of the vinyl. So a band was successful, but we were holding all this inventory. Then CDs come along, and it's like, then we're doing three formats. It's just been crazy, and that's been my world. And it just keeps on changing. What's next? Vinyl. <laughs> of course, just after I threw a whole storage space of, fuck this, vinyl. I'm going to... Yeah, bad news. Uh, as I said last time, I don't know what this chart means, but it's, it's, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> I saw Ash tweeted last night, only in Madison, what was it, a guy? A guy rode by us playing a ukulele on his bike. Yeah. So he just like It was a good job I wasn't out with you last night. I would have just punched him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> bing, 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 boom. <laughs> I mean, you know, live and let live, ish. <laughs> I was trying to find a picture of a guy playing metal, but I could, yeah. So let's have a look at my theory about what happens with formats and objects in general. Things are weird and they're new. They become adopted and iconic. Then they become lame and discarded. And after a variable amount of time, they become a hip memory prompt and they become an object again. Right? That's what's happening with vinyl. Uh, this is a coffee table at the hotel I was at in Memphis a while ago. Now people are going to be like butchering, buying up coffee tables to get the vinyl back. That's recycling right there. <laughs> Punk is now a beer. Yeah, what's up with that? What's next? Cassette tapes. Or not. <laughs> I love cassette tapes. And now, I just found this online yesterday. It's a, a cassette tape USB drive <laughs> in this huge fold-out thing where you have to keep changing pens and mess things up and scribble things out. But it's 29 fucking dollars. <laughs> just so, it's a fucking USB drive. Just so people go, oh, cassettes. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at this now. Like I want to leave and order one from Amazon right now. So an object's weird, new, becomes adopted, it's, then it's iconic, it's lame and it's discarded, and after a variable amount of time, it becomes hip again, and a memory prompt, and a USB stick. So let's test our theory with Mr. Robert De Niro. Unfortunately, I saw Robert in New Year's Eve last night. Has anybody seen that movie? What was he doing? Could he not have learned his lines or so? I mean, bad news. So at first, he was weird, new, mohawk, taxi driver. He becomes adopted, iconic. Then he becomes lame and discarded. <laughs> Analyze this. And this is where, this was a music business class. I question the, uh, the value of his management uh, team when they persuaded him to do analyze that. But no, he's not lame and discarded. He starts the Tribeca Film Festival, injects the very damaged New York City with a new energy after 
And then Tribeca becomes a car. <laughs> Tribeca's a car. Punk's a beer. The fucking... <laughs> the Plug me in, baby. What about recording studios? New York, LA, does anybody want to work at the Hit Factory? <laughs> You'd say yes or no, you don't have to sparkle. <laughs> well, if you do want to work at the Hit Factory, you've got a bit of a problem on your hands because they've turned it into penthouses. They've taken, it's like a Saturday Night Live skit. They've taken all of the people who recorded there and put all their music in the elevator. <laughs> but, like, but, and, but there's only one penthouse left, so, you know, <laughs> hurry. Uh, it's not about the square footage or the faucets. It's like, yeah, Lou Reed did uh, fucking heroin right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's an object. It's weird. It's new. It becomes adopted and iconic. And after a valuable amount of time, it becomes a memory prompt. Abbey Road. Does anybody go to Abbey Road Studios to record because of the equipment? It's to get an erection while you're using the microphone that Paul McCartney sang into. Is that his spit still? <laughs> right. Or to try and avoid the microphones that Ringo Starr sang into. <laughs> Just to, di not that I'm not digressing all the time, but what an asshole. Did you see the, the, uh, the email he sent out? As of, so just as a warning to anybody, uh, as of like October of this year, he will no longer be signing anything for anybody. So do not send him fan mail. I thought, you fucking asshole. Just put, bury it in the back garden. You know, don't just tell people they can't write to you. Have some intern scribble bullshit on a... On an envelope, you know? Why would you do that? Uh, anyway, so you fuck Ringo Starr is the side message of this. <laughs> so, what's important really with all of this? It turns out, just vibe. And we're back to a car. <laughs> Well, how weird, I just looked up then, it's just Apple logos. <laughs> Can't see anybody, it's just fucking Apple. <laughs> uh, it's weird though, isn't it? Uh, I, I just got asked to speak at the Apple store in Chicago. Anybody here from Chicago? Yeah. You don't have to say yes or no, just sparkle. Sparkle with your phones. Pauline. Uh, yeah. And I've done a lot of shit in my life, but I'm kind of, it's like the Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Apple Store, Michigan Avenue. It's like, oh, shit. It's just a fucking shop. It's, it's just a shop selling electronics. And I'm going to be like, hey, okay, make sure you get the Apple logo behind me. <laughs> They're going to whittle my 120 slide slideshow. Here's the four slides that we've cleared for you. <laughs> Go get them, Marty. All right, let's have a look at some strategies. Strategy number one will be to have a fucking strategy. <laughs> but, yeah, you could laugh, but people in bands don't. People in bands don't. Well, hey, where are you going? <laughs> We're going on the road. Where? <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> Do you have a map? Fuck off. <laughs> Map. <laughs> Number two, get the fuck out of bed. <laughs> Easy for me to say. 
I have a well, four-year-old now, four-year-old, an eight-year-old, a 15-year-old, and a 17-year-old. Um, uh, so most mornings I'm up between four and five. I'm getting kicked, kicked in the back, congealing vomit <laughs> oh, across, the, across my neck. Very similar to the situations I think some of you will find yourselves in tomorrow morning. <laughs> but I'm up an atom at five in the morning. And when I see other people start f- filtering into the, to Twitter at 10, I'm, I'm five hours ahead. At the end of a week, I'm 35 hours ahead. At the end of a month, I'm 140 hours ahead. Not that it's a competition. We're all in this swirling ball of shit together, right? <laughs> but we kind of are in a little bit of competition. In fact, we're all in fucking competition. And... <laughs> stab somebody in the eye (laughs) with a pencil. That's another strategy. (laughs) Practice for catastrophe. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, I was at the rehearsal hotel in Norway. They have, they just have bags of money over there uh, because of the oil and whatever else they've got going on. And, um, uh, so I'm touring this, this rehearsal hotel, they called it, and it was gorgeous. Uh, there was metal plate halfway up the walls, carpeting, a nice PA in every room, uh, flown, hanging from the ceiling, monitors, bless you, that worked, a piano, not that anybody uses pianos anymore, a keyboard stand, bass rig, two guitar rigs. It was just gorgeous. The elevators worked, there was air conditioning. I'm like, this is fantastic. But is that what we need? Is that what we need to use to get better? If I owned that rehearsal space, I'd be behind the two-way mirror with a series of buttons. And once the guitarist started to get into it and the vocalist started to get into it, I'd press one of those buttons and electrocute the guitarist. (laughs) I'd let them go for a little bit longer and I'd make the vocalist's microphone stop irking. I'd press another button and electrocute the guitarist again. I'd do, I don't know what I'd do to the drummer. Something. <laughs> I'd turn the PA on and off. I'd have a hole open up in the middle. Of the fucking <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> ah! I'd have piss raining from the ceiling. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> because that's every show I've ever done. So, and a bunch of Apple laptops <laughs> floating in the sky. <laughs> so those are the <laughs> those are the situations under which you practice. So that when you're on stage at Lollapalooza and you, you, you you've been electrocuted, and I could, the king, the microphone's not working, and even though it's an outdoor show, there's piss. Raining. <laughs> oh, fucking piss. Martin Atkins was right. We should buy his book. <laughs> you can triumph in the face of adversity. That's what it's all about. Anybody can do it when it's easy. You triumph in the face of adversity. I've got shit dribbling down the back of my legs right now. <laughs> But if I hadn't told you, you wouldn't have known. Because I'm a fucking professional. (laughs) Free is the new black. Just give everything away. If you're prepared to give absolutely everything away, someone's going to buy something. You don't just give people a wheelbarrow full of your shit. You give them one thing and a second thing, kind of, if they want that. And unless your music, your book, the stuff you have to sell is shit, they'll come back for more. If the stuff you're dealing, drugs, programming, same thing. (laughs) 
whatever. If your shit stinks, then they're not coming back. I think that's kind of correct, right? Just do good stuff, give it away, and people will come back for more. It's not a problem if 20,000 people illegally download your music. It's a problem if they don't. Monty Python gave all of their shit away. Their sales went up 23,000%. And there's, I don't know if that works, actually. <laughs> it's a free code for my second book, Welcome to the Music Business, You're Fuck. We'll post it later. Did you get it? Okay. <laughs> Fucked by somebody else's business plan, masquerading as help. I've seen so much of this in the music business. Home taping is killing music, and it's illegal. Well, no, it didn't kill music. Music still, this is 1980, 1970. I don't know when this was, but music survived another 30 years after that. It's shitty bands with crappy live shows and out-of-tune vocals and not enough juice for the fog machine. That's what's killing the music business. <laughs> Home sewing is killing fashion. <laughs> there's, a whole, there's a whole bunch of these. It's like just a whole range of T-shirts. They're all wonderful. Uh, use your social media with Japanese table manners. It's rude in Japan to pour your own drink, so you sit and wait for somebody else to pour yours. And that's social media, isn't it? You have to sit there and be nice and pour everybody else's drink and wait for them to pour yours. Uh, you wouldn't use that as a pickup line. Oh, that was an interesting silence. <laughs> Wasn't it? Well, that was really like, whoa. <laughs> but you have to camouflage your message. If you're in a band, you don't go on, on, on social media. I'm in a band. Fuck off. Everybody's in a band. We've just released an album. Fuck off. Everybody's released an album. We've got a show. Fuck off. Everybody's got a show. Find out what everybody else is doing. I love this quote. My dad gave me this quote. You can make more friends in two months by being interested in other people than you can in two years trying to get other people to be interested in you. So I use that all the time. Love that one. Fuck by yourself, number five. Of course, these are all out of sync. The need for external validation. Success is not external. Success is like bad gas or appendicitis, internal. Fuck by geography because America is big. The top, uh, all but 16 of the top 100 markets in the US are east of a line from Minneapolis down to Texas. So stay east of that line. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw that map, and anybody in a band I've shown that map to, they just go, oh, fuck. Todd, I was out to dinner with Todd Rundgren for a ridiculous sequence of confusing circumstances. And, um, and he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> if only I'd seen this map. Just look, look at the data. Look at the available data and have a look at a map before you spend your life driving around the country. Because <laughs> gas prices... I don't know what a gallon of gas is up here. It's like five, four eighty-nine in Chicago now. What is it here? Like three twenty? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> almost four. <laughs> There's another reason not to go west of that line. There's nobody there. <laughs> I was, I was trapped, jet lagged in a hotel room in Norway, and I've, I've got like 90 maps, like uh, incidences of pig swine fever. <laughs> you know, oh, Carl, yeah, that's one of the good ones. Fuck by yourself pursuing technical ability. Whatever, whatever field you want to get into, type that into YouTube, <laughs> followed by child prodigy and you'll see some little nine-year-old kid smoke your ass. 
Fuck by allowing yourself to think that anybody gives a shit. They don't. Nobody gives a shit about what's important to you more than you, really. Fuck by yourself a lack of imagination. One of my students uh, gave me this idea. Uh, I went to class uh, at Madison Media Institute. I teach here in town like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday sometimes. And uh, he's sitting there with a defrosting like a uh, home jelly pot on his desk. I'm like, what's that? I go, I make my own organic blackberry jam. Get me some, <laughs> and I'll give you an A. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. <laughs> Grades for jam scandal hits Madison Media Institute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is great. Next week, he's there with his pot of like defrosting, organic, homemade blackberry jam. Like, Yes, this teaching shit is finally starting to pay off. <laughs> I reach for the pot of jam. He reaches behind him. Pulls out a demo. Fuck. <laughs> I'm like, think, Martin, think, think, think. take the demo. I'm thinking, this is fine. I've got the jam. I'll throw that out the window on the drive back to Chicago. <laughs> Problem solved. Because you know, when you give somebody a demo, it's not a gift. It's a fucking imposition. When I listen to somebody else's music, which I don't have any time anyway, Least of all to listen to someone else's music that doesn't make sense because I don't know it. And then my brain starts working. Well, if they lose the first four, or oh, move that bit there. It's a fucking nightmare. So it's not a gift. Weirdly, I don't throw it out the window on the way home. I think, you know, tomorrow I'll put it in the garbage disposal. <laughs> Or set fire. I, I'm not sure. I'm going to do something heinous to this guy's demo. <laughs> so the next morning, I come downstairs, jam, demo. Put a couple of slices of bread in the toaster, and I open up the jam pot. That was it. Made a, like a, one of those noises. Thank you. <laughs> Shame that isn't one of the noises on your telephone. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it makes that it makes that sound like oh thank you <laughs> that was filthy <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> and i get this like aroma of like Blackberry, it was just fresh. Not like store-bought. It was just really aromatic and blackberry. Like, oh, fuck. Look at the demo. The toast pops up. Put some butter on the toast. I put the spoon into the jam, and it's quite runny. It's not like a store-bought jam consistency. It's quite runny. And as I spread the jam on the toast, I know that I'm fucked. <laughs> I'm going to have to listen to his fucking demo. <laughs> Not only do I listen to his demo, I film myself with the CD. His band is called Color Phase. Uh, James works at the frequency around the corner. <laughs> Look at me as if I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, frequency around the corner. And uh, I film myself putting the CD into my car stereo, and I post it on YouTube as if, as if he would know that I was going to destroy his demo, right? which he wouldn't have. I mean, I told him. <laughs> it was, 
He was sitting in the lecture the first time I did this. He was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this whole adventure. But my, my point is, what's your Blackberry Jam scam? Right? His, his pot of Blackberry Jam kind of... Now he's, I'm sure he's on social media talking about Blackberry Jam and whatever it is you do to make... I don't know what you do <laughs> to make Blackberry, Blackberry Jam. <laughs> But there, that's, that's the, my Blackberry Jam scam. Small is the new huge. Why is it bands always play the largest venue instead of the smallest? Just play the smallest. The worst thing that can happen is you sell it out and play another one. Aim low, get high. Yeah. I like that one too. Can I, can I go an extra five minutes? Or, yeah. So... I like aim low, get high. It's not a bad thing to have ambition. You should have ambition. You should be looking to the clouds of Apple logos in the sky. <laughs> but if you do, if you are looking up there, you'll miss your next step, which is there, right? And I was lucky enough to be at the Great Wall of China. And uh, it's a great analogy uh, for this. On the one hand, you can stand to a distance uh, amazed by one of the seven wonders of the world. Fuck, fuck. How did they do it? Wow. I'm standing there and I got hungry because there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken at the Great Wall of China. <laughs> I went down and I said to that guy, This is wrong on so many. Yeah, extra crispy. <laughs> but you stand off to a distance and you look at the Great Wall of China, it's just a fucking pile of bricks. It's just a pile of bricks. You can start your own pile of bricks. Six weeks from now, you'll have a shitty, meaningless, not very focused pile of bricks. Six months from now, you'll have Great Wall of China 2 going on. And your friends will come over and go, what the fuck are you doing? And you can proudly say, Great Wall of China 2, the squeak wall. And some of your friends will dismiss you as crazy, and some of them will be like, hey, this is insane. How can we help? I like to help people with things that shouldn't be happening that are kind of insane. Making those things happen is fueling as fuck. When everything makes sense on a business plan, fantastic, fuck off. Go, that looks like it's going to happen. You made a really great plan there. Bye bye I'm interested in the stuff that this is impossible. 3D printer. If those guys went to engineering school, they would have been taught that it was impossible to make a 3D printer. Boom. So, some of my little phrases, free is the new black, aim low, get high, uh, get difficult sometimes. And when I saw one of them printed in a major publication, it made me cry. Sometimes I feel like I'm just banging my head against a wall. And to see it in print like that, even though it was kind of stolen, made me cry. A great life. Sorry. A great life isn't about great huge things. It's about small things that make a big difference. And when I saw that in the IKEA catalogue. <laughs> On top of the stay on top of me. Come on, was that me? Oh, sorry. Hello, yeah, opening ceremony of the Olympics. Yeah, almost 11 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I heard a politician say, not a politician, a political strategist said this on, I don't know, ORT, is that NPR? Do they, uh, is WRT the NPR? I don't know, whatever. NPR radio <laughs> said, it doesn't matter what's happening with this or that. Uh, momentum trumps everything. 
And I think that's true. You can try and buy momentum with money, get people to help you take out ads and do stuff, and pretty soon you won't have any money or any momentum. If you have momentum, you could get whatever you need once you have momentum. Always be nice to everyone. Do the opposite. A great example of do the opposite, some of my students struggle with this. You've got Avatar, $500 million, new technology, and the artist. I don't know what the budget was for the artist. Black and white, what's the budget for microphones? No budget for microphones, it's fucking silent, fuck off. <laughs> Brilliant. Go green, do I care about your band? No. Do I care about the planet? N yes. <laughs> Only safety comes from risk. The riskiest thing you can do in this world is to be safe. Yeah, it's a, font, it's a fucking font nightmare, isn't it? It's a, I've had people come up to me afterwards, I can help you. Really? With which one of my problems? Fonts. <laughs> We're not looking for something that's global and huge and has a massive impact around the world. We're looking for a fart in the elevator. Well, we are. Not at the Sheraton, fuckos. <laughs> you create an action that works and Vidal Sassoon the fuck out of it. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, <laughs> rinse, repeat. Now, never mind the fonts have changed slide styles halfway through. Fuck. <laughs> ah, punk rock. It's a mashup. <laughs> Make cool shit. Because there's two types of shit. There's cool shit and not cool shit. You just have to make cool shit. This is my friend Moldova. He made an album with the song titles printed in electronic circuitry. Uh, and it's a, a light-sensitive theremin built into his album. I talked to you about these last time I was here. Oh, where did they go? Uh, oh, yeah. It's one my seven-inch. Uh, scratch and sniff white vinyl. Blueberry. What's it sound like? Fuck off! It's scratch and sniff blueberry. That's what it sounds like. Change the conversation. Do something interesting. Kind of lastly, if you know that you're fucked, then you're not. If you think that you're not, then you are. It's a lovely little Disney-esque thing. <laughs> Thinking about, I'm thinking about doing a whole musical based on that. <laughs> Never be afraid to throw blueberry muffins. Oh, that's my shit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>